fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver, the thing on the trail ahead. Mary O'Brien and Lieutenant McCullough rode out of the fort and along the moonlit trail at the side of the river. The young officer talked about the Cheyennes and the commission that was being sent to the reservation. But at last he noticed how silent the girl was. He turned in his saddle. What's the matter, Mary? Nothing, Dennis. It must be. You've changed. Never used to act like this when we rode together. Oh, it's been a long time. Why, I guess you're right. I've been mighty busy. In fact, we've hardly seen each other since Claire Sumner arrived at the fort. Well, that doesn't have anything to do with it. Doesn't it? Well, naturally, I've tried to make her feel at home. The colonel's asked me over for dinner quite a few times. But that doesn't mean... Well... I think it does mean... You've fallen in love with her, Dennis. Have I? No one can blame you. She's beautiful. She's a great lady. I don't like the way you say that. I'm sorry. You just don't understand her, that's all. This country's new and strange to her. If you'd only try to be a little more friendly, you'd realize... I did try to be friendly when she first came, but she made it clear that the colonel's daughter and the daughter of a scout had nothing in common. Oh, I don't believe that. The colonel said time and time again that Mike is the most valuable man at the post. We couldn't do anything without him. Claire admires him, too. I'm not Mike. I'm his daughter. You sound as if you're jealous. Maybe I am. Of your own father? Oh. And don't laugh. It isn't funny. No, I don't suppose it... Whoa. Whoa, Bess. Oh, boy. Oh, what's the idea? Dennis, if you don't mind, I'd like to ride on alone. Hmm? Please, this is a favor I'm asking. Are you mad at something? No. Well, if you aren't, I am. Well, that's too bad. I still want to ride on alone. That's fine. That's just fine and dandy. Get around there, boy. Goodbye, Dennis. Just ahead of the spot where Mary had reined up, the forest crowded down to the water's edge, and the trail swung away from the bank. Among the trees between the trail and the river, Mary had caught sight of a gray mare that Claire Sumner rode. And at that moment, the colonel's daughter was sitting on the trunk of a fallen tree. Beside her was a young Easterner. This is ridiculous, meeting you out here, Brent. I'm glad you got my message. There's no reason why you shouldn't come to the fort. You forget my uncle, the commissioner's there. Well, what of it? Well, he doesn't want to see me any more than I want to see him. Then why have you come here? Would you have to ask that? It was 
Just to see me? Why, of course. I thought Uncle Gordon would have left for the reservation by now. Do you know exactly when he's going? I don't think it's settled yet. Well, until he leaves, I'm going to stay across the river at Outlaw Point. That awful place? Well, it isn't so bad, and it only takes a few minutes to... What was that? A horse. Well, it wasn't your horse. I think you'd better be going, Claire. I don't want to. Well, it might be someone from the fort. I don't care if it well, is. Well, I do, for your sake. But when will I see you again? Well, not until my uncle leaves. Promise me that you'll send a message the night before. I'll be over the next day. All right. It's a promise. Come on. I'll help you into the saddle. Thank you. There you are. Goodbye, Mr. Wiley. Oh, I'd like to send my regards to your father, but we'd better wait for that. And don't tell anyone about my being here. All right. It's a secret. Come on, lady. Brent Wiley, headed toward the river, vanished among the trees. Claire Sumner looked after him for a moment, the faintest trace of a puzzled frown lining her forehead. Then she shook her shoulders, flipped the reins against the neck of her horse, and guided him up the slope toward the trail. The horse threaded his way through the trees, weaving in and out. Claire's eyes searched the slope ahead of her, but it was not until her mount reached the trail and the thick cover was behind her that she finally saw the horse which had whinnied before. Claire Sumner saw the rider, too. She reined in sharply. Her lips tightened and her voice turned cold as the winter wind. Oh, oh, lady. So, it's you. Yes. What have you been doing, spying on me? I'd have ridden a little closer if I wanted to do that, wouldn't I? Well, what are you doing here? Dennis and I were out riding. I happened to see your mare in the trees up ahead. Where's Dennis now? I sent him back to the fort. Out of consideration for me, I suppose. I suppose. You told him you had a headache and were going to bed early. It might have been consideration for him. I should have guessed that. You'll do me a great favor, Miss O'Brien, if you mind your own business in the future. I always try to do that. Starting right now. I'd like you to ride back to the fort with me instead of staying here to snoop. Get up, Bess. Get up there, lady. Lone Ranger and Tonto had made camp on the far side of the river, and it was only a few minutes later that the faithful Indian jumped to his feet. Kimosabe, it better we put out fire. Why, Kimosabe? Men see it from river. You mean you heard something out there? Ah, uh, got to hear splash. Oh, might have been a fish. Oh, it not sound like that. Sound like oar splash. Whoever it is can't see the fire now. Come on, we got a little closer to the bank. Ah, uh. there, lantern. Yes. That boat came from the fort. Ah, uh, him not row good. Maybe him start upstream from fort. The current would carry him down. He isn't a soldier. No. Time to not see him afore. He looks like an Easterner. That's right. There he goes, walking up the bank toward Outlaw Point. Ah. Uh. You better follow him. Anyone who has business at the point can stand watching. to wait for the girl. Well? You can congratulate me, Macklin. I'm all set. When does he leave? You mean my uncle? Who else would I mean? It hasn't been decided. Then why did you say it was now, let all... let me finish. Claire's going to send me a message the night before he leaves. Did you tell her why you wanted to know? What I told her is my own business. Now, look here, Brent. It's time you were warned I don't stand for any double crossing. <laughs> You're crazy. What did you say to her? I told her that I couldn't go to the fort while my uncle was still there. She'll send me a message so I can come over as soon as he leaves. And she fell for that? <laughs> she wanted to fall for it. Oh. <laughs> so that's the way it is. Oh, that's the way it is. Well, I hope you're satisfied. Why should I want to double-cross you? You'd like to see Gordon Wiley out of the way because if he puts an end to the Indian trouble, it means money out of your pocket. I want to see him dead because... Go on, see it. Because I want his money. I'm his sole heir. Mm. <laughs> 
You're a low-down, sneaking coyote. Well, that goes for you, too, Macklin. <laughs> we make a good pair, huh? <laughs> <laughs> been selling the Indians whiskey and guns. Not right. I wish we could have heard what they were saying. Ah, window and cabin shut tight. One thing sure. Gordon Wiley must get to the Indian reservation safely. He's the only man who can deal with the Cheyennes. Ah. We can't let any renegade like Macklin stop him. Why not Wiley take soldier with him? It'll make his job just twice as hard. The Indians don't trust the soldiers. He'll only take a few scouts. Oh, maybe that best. I'm sure of it. It's our job to see that nothing happens to him. Said it, big fella. <laughs> Get him up, Scout. Just at 12 o'clock, three nights later, Claire Sumner rode across the river from the fort to the point. She asked at the cafe where Brent Wiley was staying and then hurried toward his cabin. At last, she reached it and knocked on the door. I shouldn't have come, but I had to. He's got to be warned. Oh, is Mr. Wiley here? Why, sure. Come on in. Is that you, Claire? Yes, Brent. Why did you come over here? Well, I had to. I had to warn you. Warn me about what? What's happened? You can't come to the fort. Well, why not? Well, I thought I'd paved the way a little, so I told Father I'd had a letter from you and that you were going to pay us a visit. He said that if you showed your face around the fort, he'd have you thrown in the guardhouse. Oh, he would, huh? I couldn't make him explain at all. But why should he talk like that? What have you done, Brent? Well, nothing, Claire. Don't worry about it. My uncle's just turned him against me. When he's cleared out, I'll have a talk with your father and tell him my side of things. That'll change his mind. Are you sure? I'm positive. The important thing is, when does Gordon start for the reservation? At dawn tomorrow, but are you really sure that... I'm sure of everything now. You just get back to the fort as fast as you can. I'll see you tomorrow. What the... Oh. Who's this? It's Mary O'Brien, the scout's daughter. Yes, and this time I did follow you, Miss Sumner. When I saw you halfway across the river and heading for the point, I thought you must be loco. Now that I've seen the company you're keeping, I know it. What right have you to judge the company I keep? I've got a right to judge this hombre. He's John Macklin. There's no worse renegade in the West. Why, you Careful, little... Careful, I've got a gun. You're coming back with me, Miss Sumner. I'll decide that for myself. You may be right about one of these men, but the other's a friend of mine. He's Brent Wiley, and his uncle's the commissioner. Brent Wiley? I've heard of you from Mike. Why have you come here, Claire? What have you said to these men? Nothing. Have you told them... No, you couldn't have. You couldn't be a traitor. Come on. You'd better go, Claire. Very well. Dennis. No, I can't. Why not? Dennis, he's riding up the street. He'll tell my father I'd never be able to explain. He doesn't expect to find you here. He must have seen me crossing. What? There's a back door. Go out that way. You can keep to the trees until you get down to the river. But how Hurry can... up. Good night, Claire. Good night. But as for you, Mary, I want you to know there was nothing wrong with my being here. Brent and his uncle don't get on. I should hope not. I only came over here to tell him that his uncle was leaving tomorrow. You didn't. And that he could come over tomorrow and stay at the fort. It was you that wanted that information, Macklin. I got it. <laughs> Driver, Brent, I've got the gun. Right. And keep your hand over her mouth. I've got to get set for the soldier. She won't talk. <laughs> get her back from the door. Come on, you. Mary, why do you... Look out! Get... Oh. We've got to work fast, Brent. I'll get the lieutenant pounded and gagged. Then we'll take care of the girl the same way. You're going to leave them both here? Sure. And you may as well know it, Mary. That information was all I needed. Gordon Wiley will start from the fort tomorrow at dawn. But he'll never reach the reservation. The Indians will see to that. I'll see it so hard. <laughs> Who can do it? There's going to be a war. And every garrison in the West will be wiped out. And I'm going to furnish a spark to blow up the powder keg. <laughs> curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had spent the day in a scouting trip west of the fort. 
And it was not until an hour after Mary and Dennis had been bound and gagged that they reached the river. They swam Silver and Scout across the stream to the point. And as the great horses scrambled up the bank... Easy, boy, easy. Oh, easy. Hello, there's a girl standing on the shore. What do you mean? There, where the two boats are drawn up. From here, it looks like the colonel's daughter. What to do at Outlaw Point? We'll find out. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Teddy Silver, Teddy. Oh, oh. Don't be alarmed. An Indian and a masked man. We're not outlaws, Miss Sumner. You, you know my name. We've known your father for a long time. A masked man. A white horse and an Indian. You must be the Lone Ranger. That's right. What are you doing on this side of the river? It was foolish of me. It was wrong, and now I don't know what's happened. I heard her scream. Heard who scream? Mary O'Brien. I left her in the cabin with Brent and that man he called Macklin. Dennis was riding down the street. I went out the back door and... Oh, it's all so mixed up. I don't know what's happened. I'll try to explain. Well, I, I just came over here to tell Brent that his uncle was starting for the reservation in the morning. You what? What's wrong with that? That young Easterner staying with Macklin is Brent Wiley? Yes. And you told him? And you told Macklin, too? He was there. Mary said he was a renegade. The worst. We're heading for the cabin, steady big fella. Come on, Silver. Get him on the scout. Wait! Wait for me! <laughs> Claire Sumner galloped her horse, but Silver and Scout lunged away from her with giant strides, urged down to the Lone Ranger and Tonto. The masked man wanted to reach the cabin at Outlaw Point without her. There might be gunplay, and bullets could hit a woman as easily as a man. Together, the white stallion of the paint ghosted through the thick woods, following the narrow trail that curved along the bank of the river. As they neared Outlaw's Point, the ranger flung up his hand. The horses slowed down to a walk. And then another signal from the masked man, and... Steady, boy. Oh, easy. Oh, easy. He's got hope of her. <coughs> No light, you know, uh, There's one horse beside the cabin. The cavalry mount. Uh. The door is locked. Come on. Uh, there's a lamp on the table. Uh, I'll count the light. There they are on the floor. Them hurt? I don't think so, but they're bound and gagged. Here. Here, lamp. There. Oh, thank goodness. Dennis is a lone ranger. We're saved and we can save the commissioner, too. Where are Macklin and Brent Wiley? They left here an hour ago. They mean to ambush the commissioner? Yes. You're free now, Lieutenant. Thanks. Macklin said it would be the start of an Indian war. And before it was over, every garrison in the West would be wiped out. You think you can pick up their trail, Tonto? On them cross river, it's plenty hard to find them on the other side. And we saw the tracks of Indians this afternoon. They may have been outlaw Cheyennes working for Macklin. Maybe so. The first thing to do is get back to the fort and warn the commissioner he can't leave at dawn. I'm not so sure about that. I'm not sure about anything. What do you mean? I saw you rowing across the river. I came after you and found you here with those two men. If they know all about the commissioner's plans, then you must have told them. Dennis. Well, what else can I think? It was only the officers and your father who knew he was going to start tomorrow. I know you wouldn't have anything to do with Macklin, but Brent Wiley's different. How long have you known him? Oh, Dennis, there's no explanation I can give you. I suppose you'll have to judge by appearances. But, Mary, you've There's got... nothing more to be said. Yes, there is. Claire. Come in, Miss Sumner. I, I want to thank you, Mary, but I, I can't let you take the blame for something I've done. I don't understand what that is exactly, but I, I realize I've made trouble by coming over here tonight. Let's forget it. No, we can't do that. As long as the commissioner's warned. That comes first. But afterwards, we may be able to use Macklin's ambush to put him where he belongs. Here's my plan. <laughs> The Lone Ranger and Tonto left the lieutenant to see the girls back to the fort. Once more, they crossed the river, and after an hour's hard riding through the forest, they reached the spot where they had found the Indian signs that afternoon. Here, Tonto dismounted to examine the ground more closely. There are no track here, Kimasabi. Indian ponies? No, two horse. Them shod. Could be Wiley and Macklin. Uh, Which way do they lead? Into canyon. The canyon? It's heavily wooded. There's plenty of cover in there. I wonder if there's another entrance. Maybe so. Yeah, we'll hit the back trail for a mile or two, then cross the ridge to the north. Ah. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Steady, Silver. Hold it up. Open a hole. This is oh. the same canyon, Kimosabe. That's right. Slopes down on the other trail. Now, you go in? Yes, we got to find Macklin's camp. we better lead the horses. Hip. Come on. See a light through the trees. Ah, that campfire. We'll try to get a little closer and make sure. Get plenty dangerous. Them capture us, there's no way to get word to port. If we don't come back, the commissioner won't leave. We've got to find out where they intend to ambush him or our plan won't work. Ah. Now, this is far enough. We can make out the faces around the fire now. Oh, they're plenty Indian. Are they from the reservation? No. Them not good Cheyenne. 
Them renegades, the whole tribe will be blamed for whatever they do. There are no white men around, sire. I know. Are you sure about those hoof prints you found on the other trail? Ah, uh, Indian pony not make them. Look, there's Macklin and Wiley walking into the light now. Ah. Uh, yeah, we've seen enough. Back the way we... You come. not move. Reach for Sky. Indian. Uh, them post guard. Me take gun. No, you don't. Uh, Quick, Tonto. Don't let him call for help. I'll take care of him. You lead the horses. What we do with them? We'll have to take him with us. That's all. Now hurry. Just at dawn, two men rode out of the fort. One of them was young Lieutenant McCullough. The other was wrapped in a great coat against the morning chill and was mounted on a white stallion. They rode slowly toward the west and disappeared in the wooded hills. It was over two hours later that Brent Wiley hurried toward the campfire. Macklin, what's the matter with you? I've been over there on the ridge. He's coming. You're sure? I can't see his face, but I know the coat he's wearing. How many men with him? Just one. Yeah, that's good. Pass the word along to the boys, but tell them to keep quiet. Right. Much farther. You can see the opening of the canyon up ahead. They'll wait until we get right in front of the opening, won't they? I believe so. It was a mistake to take me with you. Uh, we have some hard riding ahead of us. You're the only man at the fort who's up to it. But they left me bound and gagged across the river. When they see I'm free, Keep they'll... your hat pulled down. They won't have much chance to see your face. It isn't far now. No. When they start yelling, we swing to the left. Just follow me. They let them keep us in sight, but we'll keep out of range. How far is it to the other canyon? About five miles southeast. Back toward the fort, son? Yes. There they are. Come on, Silver. Get up, boy. With Macklin and Wiley in the lead, the renegade Indians raced down from the canyon. But the Lone Ranger and the young lieutenant swung away from the trail and headed south through the trees. Every moment they were in danger of being swept from the saddle by the low branches. The tangled undergrowth clutched at their feet. On they rode, due south for a mile, and then toward the east. Macklin urged his men on. After them, boys! Can't let them get away now! Where are they going? They don't know. They're just trying to lose us. The ground's sloping up. We're coming to another ridge. Hey, look. What's the matter? They're heading into a blind canyon. Good. We've got them. Have your guns ready, boys. Yeah. How far can they go up here? Not more than a half a mile. You think they'll make a fight of it? They won't have a chance. And when they see that blank wall in front of them, I think they'll surrender. They're raining up already. Yeah. Taking cover behind those rocks. We'll smoke them out. Pull them oh, 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 oh. Find some cover. Let them have it. Why, Dennis? You're running short of ammunition? Sort of. Hold your fire until they charge. Well, that's right now. What time? What time is it? Uh, five minutes to ten. I told the Colonel ten, Dennis. I wanted to be sure we had them inside here. I've got six cartridges. So have I. That means one more charge. And then... The Colonel might be a few minutes early. Let's hope he is. Here they come again. Are they going to quit for a while? No. There's Macklin urging them on. We're finished, mister. They've been stopped. For how long? Macklin's showing himself again. He's guessed we're out of ammunition. Now he's proving it to the others. Yes. Mask man, if you should happen to get out of this and I don't, would you take a message to the girl? Who do you mean, Claire Sumner? Claire? No, of course not. My girl, Mary. Just tell her that... that... Oh, it's too late, I guess. No, it isn't. It's the colonel and our boys. They got here in time. The Indians are giving up. Where's Mac? I don't see him. There he is, trying to climb up the side of the canyon. He'll get away. Nobody's noticed him. Here, Silver. What are you going to do? I'm going after but him. But your gun's empty. I'll get another from Tuttle's Come on, Silver. Oh, Silver, steady, steady. Quick, Kimosabe, give me your gun. Uh, what matter? Macklin's halfway up the side of the canyon. I don't know, I see him. Then the girl's hiding him. You want out? We can't let him get away. Come on, Silver. Almost to the top. Once I get there, they'll never find me. I'll get even for this. Stop or I shoot. What the... There he is. I can't miss. Oh, the gun. Where is it? I shoot with my left hand. Next time, I'll come closer, Macklin. You aren't going to get me. I'll show you. Get... 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 Get...
Desperately, Macklin lunged at the Lone Ranger. Both men lost their footing, and as they struggled, crashed down the steep slope of the canyon. The masked man tossed away his gun as the outlaw went for his throat on the level ground at the foot of the slope. Slowly, he tried the vice-like drift loose. Come here. Then, with the swiftness of a panther, he was on his feet, pulling Macklin after him. Don't, don't hit me. You've had enough, then? Yeah, I've had enough. Good work, masked man. We saw you coming down the slope, but we were afraid to shoot. Here's your prisoner, Colonel. I don't think you'll make any more trouble. You can be sure of that. The Shands will deal with the Indians, but we'll take care of him and Brett Wiley. You? This is all your fault. Mine? What are you talking about? That wasn't your uncle on the trail. It was a masked man wearing his coat. It was you who let us into this trap. It was a masked man. Yes. And now that his work's done, he's on his way. Come on, Silver! Get him on, He called his horse Silver. That's right. And just in case you still can't figure out what's happened, that was the Lone Ranger. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>